suddenly, I found myself here. What is it? Yes? Dr. Buria said he won't be able to make it back here today. He's asked if you could visit again. Tomorrow? Tomorrow? No, I think I'll wait for Ashwak to wake up because we lose all the progress we made today. But you should leave before it gets too late, Dr. Chat. I think I'll be fine. Why don't you go and see whether Ashwak is woken up or not? Please, thank you. Go! Case number 407, Ashwaq Quresh. Temporal disorientation can be confirmed. He is currently recuperating from his last spell of falling unconscious and has been asleep for more than five hours. I am waiting for him to wake up. So, He's woken up, sir. I'll come. Good evening, Dr. Chatterjee. Good evening. Ashfaq, you've recovered well, as I can see. And I'm so glad that you're still speaking with me. Why wouldn't I speak to you? Well, in the last three years, do you remember having spoken with anybody? You already know the answer to your question, Dr. Chatterjee. And so do I. Though, I'd like to say that the most important conversations are never spoken out loud. You haven't spoken with anybody in the last three years. Until, of course, this morning, just before our first session. Strange, isn't it? It is a big breakthrough, Ashwak. I hope you know that. And your brother's going to be so happy to hear about it. But uh, you just mentioned that the most important conversations are the ones that aren't spoken out loud. What exactly did you mean by that? To believe me, Dr. Paul, first, you have to be open 
to the idea of things like fate and destiny. The fact that everything is written. From everything pure to all things evil. Every little detail has been waiting to occur. Until just the right moment. I know about what is to come. You mean <clears throat> you can predict the future? Only the parts that I have been told about. Why don't you make a prediction for us, Ashwak? <clears throat> something in the near future. You know, something we can verify. And if it turns out to be true, I'll have no option but to believe in you. You see this glass over here, Dr. Chatterjee. At precisely 6.50 p.m., exactly two drops of water will fall from the ceiling into this glass. Hmm. 6.50 p.m., you say? Well, that's something we can definitely check on. In fact, I'm going to set an alarm for it. There. Done. But there is something else that I want to ask you in the meanwhile. You know, just before you fell unconscious this morning, you were repeating a series of numbers. Something like two, one, one, one. Any idea what those numbers mean? I don't know what you're talking about. Because they are the exact same sequence that you've also written on the walls. Care to take a look? No, it does not make any sense to me. Wait, maybe it's a message from him, meant for you. Ah, uh, a message from him. Given the circumstances how I found myself in this institute, I'm quite certain that you would mock anything I have to say. Nonetheless, I'm prepared to talk about him. Go ahead. The village, Dr. Paul, where the incident took place that night, Fizlapur. It's only a few kilometers from here. Do you know how Fislapur got its name? Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you a story now. Whether you choose to believe it or not depends on how sane you choose to believe you are. Over 150 years ago, there was a man who performed miracles. Said to be blessed by the gods, he could see through time. So powerful was his following that the people named the village he lived in after him. They called it Fislapur, the land of Baba Fisla. As time passed by, People began to notice that the Baba's blessings were slowly turning into curses. Those who got rich would end up on the streets. Those cured from illnesses found themselves rotting from within. And those who couldn't bear children bore offsprings doomed to a life of sickness and suffering. Dr. 
Dr. Paul. Everything that's meant to happen has to happen. The universe must maintain its balance. If we are to interfere with its order, he must pay the price. This is something the Baba had always known. Around that time, many children went missing around Fizlapur. The villagers started talking amongst themselves and wondered if the Baba had something to do with it. One night, one of them secretly followed him to his cave. Mortified, he ran back to his village. Word spread like wildfire. And that very night, all the villagers went to the Baba's cave. The sight and stench of decaying corpses was too much to take. They knew without a doubt that the Baba was responsible for the missing children. When they found him, he sat calm, awaiting his fate. They beat him, pulled him, dragged him out the cave, tied him to a pole and set him on fire. All through this he stayed calm. And as the fire engulfed his body, he smiled and said, You may kill my body, but you can never kill my soul. From this day on, all those who set foot upon my land, in the shadows of the night, will belong to me for all eternity.